The gym is a huge part of life for many modern men. While this is a great thing, sadly the gym is a place where many people lose their sense of etiquette and manners. With this video, I'm going to help you navigate the gym like a gentleman. This is especially important because in the gym, we're sharing something that's somewhat personal and private with potentially dozens of other people. And we must be aware that other gym goers, both male and female are doing the same thing. So these eight points will help you be a courteous, respectful, and productive member of the gym. Not only will they improve your workouts, but they will improve the workouts of others. So let's begin with the first principle of gym etiquette. If there's one thing that the gym and golf have in common, it's that what you wear is a surprisingly important part of etiquette. The exact style of clothes that you choose to wear while you work out will totally come down to your personal preferences, but they must be appropriate for exercising. That means no jeans, no street shoes, and no topless workouts. Also, make sure you're always wearing fresh workout clothes whenever you're at the gym. Although you might be able to wear an ordinary pair of shorts or a shirt more than once before you wash it, that does not apply to your gym clothes. Perhaps the most courteous thing of all you can do for your fellow gym goers is just not smell bad. Clean clothes is the right place to start, and I think there's nothing wrong with a subtle spray of a sporty cologne. I would also advise you to bring a towel if your gym doesn't provide them. And before I move on to the next point, let me know in the comments if you would like to see a dedicated video on what to wear to the gym. Let me tell you a little story about when I first got into going to the gym and weight training. I was about 150 pounds and just learning how to do the compound moves like the deadlift. There was a huge Neanderthal type bodybuilder who'd been using the barbell before me and when I got there he'd left not one, not two, but four 45 pound plates on each side. Needless to say, I could not move this thing at all and I had to ask somebody for help which was a little embarrassing because especially as a newbie, going to the gym is already intimidating enough. So now anytime I think about leaving a plate on a barbell after a squat, deadlift or bench press, I always come back to this moment because you never know who's going to be using that piece of equipment after you. And even if it is a huge bodybuilder, it's not their job to take off your plates and reset the station. When putting the bar back on the squat rack after you're done, don't put it at the highest level because that will be out of reach for some more petite women. As for the free weights, it's a massive sign of disrespect if you leave them lying on the floor. Try to put them back in their proper place on the rack. Now at some gyms like LA Fitness, the rack of dumbbells is just a disorganized mess. But try your best to keep some sense of order for your fellow gym goers. This next rule of etiquette has some leniency depending on the kind of gym that you're at. But loud grunting, dropping weights on the floor, and other aggressive behaviors are going to make others feel uncomfortable at certain types of gyms. Lifestyle gyms like Equinox, health clubs, and your apartment community gym are not the place for that. If that's how you like to work out and you want to be aggressive, then I understand, but go to an old school type of bodybuilding gym where that kind of behavior is accepted and even welcome. I've also seen some pretty weird stuff in the gym, like guys dancing around in front of the mirror, singing, working out topless. Just don't be that guy. Now, working out is like sex. If you're doing it right, you're going to get sweaty. But other gym goers do not want to have anything to do with your sweat. That's why you should always wipe down equipment, especially the benches, after using them. Even if you don't particularly care about other people's sweat, you can't assume that they don't care about yours. So personally, I wipe down the equipment out of consideration for the next person, not really for myself. One of the few good things to come out of the pandemic is that most gyms now have wipes readily available all over the floor. But if your gym doesn't provide them, consider bringing your own wipes or a bottle of cleaning spray and a cloth. In some apartment community gyms and even chain gyms, I've noticed that people will bring a Bluetooth speaker and play music out loud in the gym. This is massively inconsiderate. Whatever music you like, most people don't want to hear it. So if you want to listen to music, bring your headphones. But be aware that noise cancelling headphones and just playing music very loud can really reduce your spatial awareness. 
In a place where heavy weights are being lifted, that can be quite dangerous. I believe you should always keep your headphones to a volume so that if somebody needs to grab your attention, they can. And you'll notice people walking behind you or getting close to you. This is especially important when the gym is busy and people are trying to figure out what equipment is free and if there's space where they can come and work out. Some people like to keep their headphones on at all times and never talk to anyone in the gym. That's fine if you prefer that, but don't forget that the gym can be an incredibly friendly community. It's okay to strike up conversations. To give you an example, I was at LA Fitness one time and I noticed that the guy next to me was wearing an England rugby shirt. Turns out he was also British and we had a conversation between sets about moving to America. Always say hello and goodbye to the gym staff when you enter and leave. And don't be afraid to ask a fellow gym goer to spot for you or help you with a certain exercise. Nothing is ruder than a gym goer who will sit on a certain piece of equipment for ages while taking long breaks on their phone. This is especially annoying when it's a popular piece of equipment like the squat rack. Now I understand it's necessary to take breaks, but keep your eye on the clock and don't get lost in scrolling. Otherwise you're wasting the time of your fellow gym goers and your own. When others want to use the same machine that you're using, I recommend that you invite them to take turns. This is more common in some cultures than others, but it can be a good way to make new friends at the gym. As gentlemen, we must understand that many women feel uncomfortable and anxious about going to the gym. In most gyms in the US, men outnumber women by about five to one. I have never met a woman who hasn't been stared at or approached when she doesn't want to be while she's working out. It's a universal fact that going to the gym is a more intimidating experience for women than it is for us men. So as gentlemen, we must be considerate of that. I wish this went without saying, but under no circumstances ever take photos or videos of somebody in the gym without their consent. Rightly, most gyms will ban you outright if they catch you doing that. If you want to approach a woman at the gym, it's best to do this when she's not in the middle of her workout. Most gyms will have a juice bar or another social area where people stop by after working out. That's a much better place to introduce yourself than when she's using the thigh abductor machine. Gentlemen, this has been my first ever video on the topic of the gym and working out. Let me know in the comments if you would like to see more content on this subject. If you're looking to level up your etiquette in other areas of modern life, I encourage you to check out the video I made on phone etiquette. I share six mistakes that a gentleman never makes, so you can not only become a more considerate phone user, but also have a more healthy relationship with these devices. So I hope you enjoyed that video. Thank you for watching this one, and I'll speak with you all in the comments.